Fantasy and Color Podcast. We back. Episode 7. I'm Rob Ayala. I'm Gideon Phillip. Today we have a very special guest. We're very excited to have to the show. C. Santana. Hey, welcome Santana. Hey guys, we're so excited to be here. Because I see you guys out on the scene all the time. And it's the first time we get to like actually sit on the kitchen. Definitely. People may know you from being a curator from The Grind. But now you're into some new stuff. Before we get into your new stuff, when we have people on the show, we like to go back, back, back. We want to know all we can know about you. As quick as as quick as you can do it, but go back as far as you can remember, because also you're an artist too. Mm-hmm. So, just as a creative person, when did you first realize you were like a creative person, and what and, and in what way? Um, you know, people might be surprised, but yeah, I started my entire journey by doing poetry. You know, getting into rap as a teenager. Are oh, you spit? You got sixteens on deck? I do not have sixteens. <laughs> Next time. Next time. <laughs> Next time for sure, but. <laughs> You know, I had a love for music that brought me to New York City. I'm from New right. Jersey. I'm from a very small town called Union City. Okay. And, you know, it's a really lovely town. If anybody gets a chance, go definitely check it out. And, you know, I just moved to New York with, um, I first started really quickly, you know, interning at a local radio station at the okay. time. And, um, you know, introduced me to different things, going to different shows in the city. So I got into, like, media, photography, video, things like that. And kind of just grew my career from there. Mm-hmm. And I decided to, you know, go to school for it. Yada, yada. You know, I was yeah. an artist myself. And I was just, you know, I just took mad different lanes in my creativity in my like early adulthood. So then I just took it from there, you know, and I met, had met a lot of people in New York and, you know, established lots of friendships, partnerships, companies, right. and just went on from there. Just like in, living in New York, I'm still here, living out in Brooklyn now. Yeah. So right. yeah, that's where I'm at. So what kind of, so you said you were doing art. What Could you describe what kind of art you were doing? So at the time I was doing, I did, it was like kind of strange. I was doing graphic art with like fabric. So okay. I did like graphic art and I cut it out the graphic art and put it on top of fabric. I would go to like 34th Street to the... Almost like screen print? Kind of? Kind of. Like I would post pictures and just post them. I wish I had, I don't even have that. Yeah, it's all good. It's so interesting. But yeah, I was just like really into art at the time. So that's how I was like kind of getting out, getting to know people was just right. going out and just showcasing my work at the time. So I started meeting people through that. My How'd you get into the, the curating? So I, you know, at the time I met Saf and we were like friends. So we were, you know, chilling out. We were like friends for like five, six years. We had a great like run and we, um, she was into open mics. I was into art. So at the time I was exhibiting all my artwork and she was getting to know a lot of people who were doing, you know, performances and stuff. We got together and, you know, right. us and a team of people, we created the NYC Grind, yeah. we co-founded. All of it, and you know, just was there for so many years and created it so what it is now. Cause that's how I met you. Yeah, I met you when we had did the show at Brook Park. That yeah. was my first time really meeting me right. you. But we never really got a chance to sit down. But I just knew you from that, and I've done a couple grind shows, so it was just like, okay, it's Word. better to get a better handle and feel on everything. You know, it was it was definitely crazy, you know. And then from there, I had shows out with um a, another company called Artist Vibes that we started out in. New Jersey that I started out with these two other co-founders and it was lit, you know, the art world just became so like much bigger. And this is a period of like, give us a, like from what years are we saying, like last three, four years? Are we talking about the last? Oh my God, I'll say like maybe the last, yeah, three or four years. Okay. Three, four, yeah. four years. How many shows would you say, I know it's hard to count because I'm a numbers guy, I count everything I do. How many shows do you think you curated through through that through that era? Ooh, at least thirty. Okay, I would say. I think you did more than that. For sure. Do you think so? I think so. Oh wow! Thank you guys. guys That's so interesting. I did. uh, Just to give you context, we've done over seventy. Wow, wow, yeah, but I could definitely see that. For so, sure. yeah, like, so remember, we were doing like, every two like weeks, too, at one point. Like yeah, yeah, see, with the shows that we did, it was only. That's like, true, that's true. They were, it, was, it was more spread out. It was like every three to four. But months. I even count you, because I'm sure you did other smaller things in between, you know, every yeah, now. So, yeah. I count all that shit. So, y'all did like the ciphers and stuff, too. I remember. There were so many things. Because yeah. just even yeah. events, even if it's not art, but just curating mm-hmm. a vibe. That's what I call myself a vibe curator. I'm not necessarily. Yeah, I don't like, I don't call myself a curator, to be honest with you, even though. People that don't know, I, I do hang the stuff at our shows. I don't know if you ever knew that, but no, yeah, same yeah. here. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You gotta yeah. do it when you know what I'm saying. When you're there, you gotta kind of like when you have the vision, you gotta kind of like yeah. build it for yourself. So yeah, like you know, we wanted to have like these crazy, try to have like these light, larger than life shows. So right. you know, that was kind of like the vision for it at the time. But you know, I took a definitely a took a spin and definitely um. What got more interested into music and to like media marketing because that was really where my passion was as well. When we came to New York to do, it, you know, and I had so much fun throughout the last two or four years with all the artists I got to meet. Like, yeah. and because of like all the artists, I built like such a crazy community that like now I know you guys from. Yeah. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't be here. Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's it's all a part of everything. Like yeah. everything that you do, 
that's creative, I think it's connected. I don't yeah. care if it's from music to art, whatever it is you do, you have your it's the it's still, you still have the same network yeah. that can carry. I always believe that six degrees of separation type of like theory yeah. that everything's like kind of just separated by six degrees of separation, but it's all intertwined in some way. Facts, facts. Yeah. So that takes us to rap bully, right? Yes. That's that's what your your um your new endeavor. Oh, wait, so does that mean you're you're really not focusing on art at all right now as far as Yo, for the events? record, I am no longer with the NYC grind. Yeah. You know, I am, you know, I am definitely embarking on this. Because most people know, uh, like, I know you for hitting you up for the art shows. I'm sure you still get... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, all the time. Mm-hmm. And I just let everybody know, hey, like, I'm on a new venture. I'm doing this sort of thing. Shout okay. out to, mm-hmm. you know, everything that they're doing. And I hope nothing but success. But yeah. I'm definitely um trying to, like, just do different things at yeah, this portion okay. in my life you know and focus on the you know things I feel like where my strengths are and the art community you know what I'm saying it was just it was mad lit but like I love I had like a more deeper passion for music gotcha. so I wanted to right. definitely take it was something you felt wasn't being like inside yeah, yourself yeah you know yeah. Not saying that you won't eventually you you couldn't do something in the future with no art. absolutely like just, just that's not what you're doing right now yeah I will always and that's what, you know when I definitely made that decision I always I try to let everybody know like I'm always going to involve art in my life any kind of way because I as a you know I also do marketing advertisements for separate companies I, right. I own my own marketing agency yeah. so I definitely if I can help and, and start marketing campaigns through visual artists through minority groups through my black and Latino you know camera uh, cameras and then everybody camaraderies and everybody that I meet through this industry I'm definitely gonna plug everybody in because. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why not? If, exactly. So uh, shout out to all the artists. Please keep in touch with me because I have so much more in store, just in a different way. So tell us about Rap Bully. So Rap Bully is like a media promotions company. I started it about a year ago. Um, you know, after the I was done with the shows, you know, with the, you have to find a different way to live and how to do, you know, find out different ways to make your life happen for yourself. So I started, it started off as a blog initially, and now it's like more of like a promo company. And right. Basically, we produce you know, music videos, media and content. Um, we produce shows, podcasts, interviews, anything to help promote artists. We almost up to 10K this month, so nice, come nice. and follow us. Um, We're I'm, not, so help, help follow <laughs> hey, us. Yeah, hey, yeah, we feel the top. We definitely feel the top. <laughs> but, but as I was speaking before, even when I was working with you know all these different companies and the grind mm-hmm. and all of that, I definitely had like I saw a skill for myself. I had marketing and advertisement. I was really good with numbers. I wanted to apply it in different ways and different formats for different things so I was just like you know I want to help independent artists get on right. and maybe one day if I want to get into music I definitely have my own platform my, I, um, my main goal for it is to be like a a smaller not even a smaller I want it to be like a world star of some sorts for independent artists right. cause you know worse if this been like a whole grand just to be on it to promote it I want it to be a little bit more accessible and get all the amazing rappers and singers and everybody that I know to get on this platform okay. and just go out there and try to help them out with the skills that I, I do have so yeah. trying to put everything into like a package with all my creative skills and trying to focus on one thing like I just what I want to do what musicians have you um have you have you you started already right what music, mm-hmm. musicians have you worked with up so far as far as with rap bully like it's for- I worked with so many I can't even, I worked with so many different musicians in a different way as far as music videos I'm I'm working with this one artist from Missouri Stitch eighty one classic um another artist from Rockaway Park um Young Kirk check out our, our YouTube channel we're almost up to a thousand subscribers we have um. I met this really dope artist called Mo Dove. He's up on the channel. I'm, you know, anybody who's hearing this right now, please like hit us up, watch the videos if you yeah. want to. Special, since I'm on this podcast, if you hit me up right now, you know, I'll definitely put you on our YouTube, get you some plays, get yourself some royalties and streams. Definitely. Like, yeah, facts. Like, so even, and I re- recently, I'm having this magazine come out in the next couple months. We have VH1's from Atlanta, Tobias Tate. He's going to be interviewed. So working very hard trying to put it out there. Okay. Yeah. I also noticed on your um, Instagram, uh, I've noticed that like you guys keep also up to date with what's going on currently with the music. So as you as a fan, like what are some things that you're really like taking a liking to? Like, cause you also have to be a fan of the music. So what are you really like a fan of right now? Like who? Like, in, whether it's mainstream or independent, what who are you? Oh my doing? god, like, it's so hard because, like, I'm like a music junkie, so right. I'm like listening. Give us three, just give us three. 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 We, three. On this podcast, we like to separate shit on pick your best yeah, three. This, best three. we oh, like to do so best sorry. and that, and that's what yeah. we do. Ooh, we do that, yeah. we like to do it. We go at each other, too. <laughs> oh my god, this is so hard, man. This is so we're gonna hard. get into some hip hop talk, too. Some yeah. of your favorite um artists, but. So Give us three. Just three artists right now off the dome. You still like the rest. She's just naming three. Yeah. Do you have to be commercial, independent? No, whatever whatever you one, like. Whatever one you feeling. Give me one. Give me one commercial. At least one commercial. 
The rest you can choose. Mm. Oh my god, you know, y'all gonna laugh at me, but I really like. No, um, we don't laugh at music. No. I really like, like Playboy Cardi. Boys. I really enjoy Little no. Uzi. Okay. I really enjoy like um Little Pump. No, why would we laugh at you though? You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people like you know are like, oh, that's not really hip hop or music, but that's music. To nah, me. nah, nah, we don't, we don't, we don't, we ain't nah. biased like that. Nah, we ain't like. We ain't classic. I like the here. little. I kind of. I'm liking the little. You like the little. Lils, yeah. I like the Lils. I like. Isn't Little Wayne the father of the Lils? Yes. Little Wayne is definitely the father He's of the, the Lils. He's the grandfather. He's the grandfather of the. Grandfather. The, the first quote unquote mumble rapper, right? Because mm-hmm. they were used to, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, we had that was our first episode. That James Brown was a mumble rapper. We just. <laughs> the, okay. I know. I know okay. when you hear that, you go, "It's like wait, James Brown." But we were just saying that for that time. He was, it was music that was more vibe and groove more heavy. Scat, more and scat, he yeah. did have a, a flow and style that wasn't clear, understandable, which is like today's music. So right, now nah, right. we, we fuck with everything. We not, that doesn't mean all of it is dope. Mm-hmm. And and like for Playboy Cardi, I do fuck with Playboy Cardi. I fuck with Playboy Cardi. But you fuck with people in certain ways. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily need a, need a whole Playboy Cardi album. Okay. But that doesn't mean I don't fuck with him. But I can I, I can I definitely fuck, rock some joints. I, yeah. I, li- I really yeah. love Uzi. I love Trippy Red. I love rock. I like Trippy Red a lot. And Trippy Red, Red definitely is like he uses his vocals. Like as a person who appreciates music, I can hear that. I can hear when you can an artist is yeah, he's very good. Of music, yeah, so. it's different. Like when you mm-hmm. hear him, um, we debate we debate all the time. But I like Six Nine. I love Six Nine. Don't even get me started. I like Six Nine. I really think he's. Me, I think me, he's let good. Me, let me clear the record though. He's not my favorite musician. He's my favorite. Well, we know he's not your favorite no. musician. He's not. You know what I'm saying? And like music wise, I don't. I'm not gonna say I go out and look for his music, but I watch right. his interviews. I think he's an intelligent, bright young. He's man. smarter than he perceives. Than he, he tries to act. He's definitely New York as fuck. Yeah. I love. I love Six Nine. You know what he is too? Like that's what you, like if people don't get this, that's that's why I like when you when you have a knowledge of music, mm-hmm. you can compare shit and realize. This is not so outlandish as you think. Mm-hmm. He's like, we were saying, like an Onyx from back in the days, like that rowdy. Rowdy, if DMX. You can, DMX. You try, you know what I'm he actually says he's he he um he is inspired by industry. DMX. Like, yeah. But if you think about it, you got if you listen to his music in the right context, mm-hmm. then you get. To, I'm telling you, I'm not gonna lie. In a, in a in a club atmosphere, speakers, that shit sounds dope. Mm-hmm. And I said before, yeah, I'm not gonna listen to it just regularly chilling. No. But if I'm at the gym, I'm probably gonna exactly. I'm gonna gonna put a couple tracks on. I don't hate him as a musician. This is certain songs I just. I think you're turned off by by him too a little bit. Yeah, I don't pay attention to him. But tell you, that's a a, a, a probably a a big factor. A tad big factor. Like I'll listen to like when I hear a six nine song, it's out. I'll listen to it, but I'm not going out my way to find it. It's like if it plays for me. Yeah, this certain artists like certain artists that like relevant now that like probably newer that. If I hear they have a song, I'm going to look for it. Like I'm a, I, as I told you before, I'm like when we talked about albums of the year, I'm a big Denzel Curry fan right now. You know, so. I have to give him. I, you know, I was never a very big Denzel Curry, but that latest album that he had, Taboo, was cried. He was cried. And he was when so I cried. see it, when I see anything from him, I'm taking off to go that listen. Was good. So, so are you a '90s baby or '80s baby? I was born in '94. So you okay? I need to know that so I could, cause I, I can cover whatever. I'm an '80s baby, so I need to know what I could, what I could ask man, you. Listen, Unless you know your shit. I know my shit, man. Listen, like, Holland knows George Michael. But, but, like, and, but okay, oh yeah, that's and that's even broad. I was gonna even just keep it hip hop since we're talking rap bully. What's your, what's your, what's your, um, what's your? You were born in '94, right? What's my favorite? So that means you pretty much, so you, so you pretty much a '2000s kid. Like I'm an '80s, '80s kid. I'm an '80s baby and a '90s kid. kid. Okay. And you are, uh, I guess, both. He's he's older than you though, but. Your 90s babies yeah. and 2000s kids. Pretty much. I was out here getting people pregnant in the 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> this one person. I have one daughter. One daughter. But I'm just saying, that's a difference. That's a huge difference, man. Yeah, like, that's a huge like difference, that. bro. <laughs> All right. I have ADD. Switch topics. What's the best fucking, not even group, best hip hop movement? I'll show you what I mean. Dipset. Rough Riders, whatever you can think of, I might be missing shit. We could even say ASAP, no, no generational, just whatever. Um, we won't go too old, cause I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna battle mm. like, we're not gonna say '80s crews and shit, but, but whatever. Um, I would say ASAP Rocky and them. Um, we're beat, we're putting them over Wu Tang. Oh, no, let's let's just let's, all, let's, let's flesh oh, everybody yeah. out first. That's like a land. That's, that's not fair. We can't put flesh. Wu-Tang. We can't put someone like Wu-Tang. But, you can't compare Wu Tang. But they were a movement. But then you also got to put like the Dungeon Family and all of them in the south. No, they were a movement. Like, all right, if, let's take, we can take Wu Tang off. Take Wu Tang off. They, they I'm gonna say too OVO. I'm gonna say OVO. I'm gonna say Dungeon Family. Uh, OVO can't compare to a movement. I can't. Who? It's like two. Besides of them. Drake. 
It's Drake is a whole movement on its own because of OVO. No, I'm gonna say Dungeon. But it just in the spirit of a movement, I feel like it has to be at least four or five members that you fuck. Like okay. Dip said, you like Jim for being Jim. Yeah. You yeah, like Jim. Santana, the young cute one. Cam is the cool. You know what I mean? Like the, Rough Riders was a movement. You had the okay, lot. That's the case. DMX, that's the case. Yeah, Rough Riders was a movement. Yeah, they were. Terror Squad was a movement. Oh, yeah. I'm just about to say, I'm gonna say Dipset then, if that's the case. If that's the I'm case, gonna I'm gonna go Dipset too. But I'm from Harlem. I'm, I'm glad y'all joined me. Ah. Uh, so wait, but let's let's flesh it out though. Who, what else? Death Row was a hell of a movement. And but that's you a, know what? Wasn't sustained as long. But you know what? It doesn't even matter. That's the chronic and dog. It was. It was. Two albums alone. Mm-hmm. Dr. Dre's first but, album, which might have came out. Those and, both those albums came out. Might be before gonna you be the person that goes like by technicality. See, that's how you know he was young, because only young chicks say they he or he's born. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna say. It's a fact. I'm Is gonna say <laughs> Dungeon Family. 94 sounds sexy. Because the reason why I say Dungeon Family <laughs> is Outcast, Future. You that's not your number one, Kadeem. You try to, you no, try to have saying, a hot take. You said if that's it was the best. You that's said, not your favorite movement. No, you said what was the best. You didn't say what was my favorite. No, what's your favorite movie? I mean, it's Dipset. If it's okay. my favorite, but what's the best? We best. gotta look at the results. If you best is subjective. Best to me best is, is probably... Best is subjective, but your favorite... Favorite is subjective. Favorite is Dipset. I would have to say Dipset. Dipset, because to yeah, be honest, true. like, get crunk music. Like, they mix a lot of that Southern influence with that East Coast. They mix a lot of stuff. But then again... Have you really like it? Like, but then again, press? I kind of have to tie it. We, we let phones ring and all that. Right <laughs> I, turned, I turned it off. No, it's good. I'm going to do that. You, you would think I would do that, right? You damn mm-hmm. But, uh, you're damn damn <laughs> it's all the time. All the time. So, I don't know. Rough Riders is very debatable to be a tie. Unless y'all just don't fuck with Rough Riders. I fucked with Rough Riders. But we talking about DMX, The Locks, Eve, Dragon. Well, I think, like, I think... You you was but the reason you, why you I remember that, that yeah right? but I still think Dipset to this Dip day like to this day they still like, people Dip still set go set crazy. Up if Dipset doesn't uh, Dip come, you don't the, have a hip hop uh, Dipset the hip hop Beatles. No, who is? That's a great one. Are the I Dip think so. The I think so. I think so. I say Rockefeller. No. I say it's, it's swag. You know why I say Rockefeller? No. There's so many things that go Dip from Rockefeller. Who them, oh, if you want to get on some nerdy shit, I I can break down why the Dipset are the hip hop Beatles member for member. Because the Beatles were like all distinctive members that had okay, their so Everybody stood Everybody stood apart. Just, just like fucking member for member, member, yeah. Member, yeah. Right. Like, you say yeah. Rockefeller, that's Jay-Z. Well, I think of... <laughs> and, then, and then when they had a nice push was State Property. That's their own Not thing. everybody Another knows movement. Okay. Another Not movement. Not everybody knows Dame and Dash. Everybody just yeah. knows Jay-Z. Yeah. Every I know him because project. I know No, I think people know Dame and Dash. I don't know if everybody associate him with... Rockefeller. Rockefeller, yeah. We do. I mean, that's, I do, to me, that's... I'm a hip-hop yeah, exactly. nerd kid, but if we're talking about... If you're talking about members of the group, then yeah, I'll go Dipset. Dipset. Because if you really look at it, Jim had his own lane. Jewel's had his own lane. If ASAP had two more up, people that did something, then like, he, not to yeah, say it like that, yeah, but yeah, yeah. just more I mean, was more popular. No, he doesn't. Stop. He I'm has talking two about, that's coming. They're like, 12, he's, 12, don't give 12. He's been coming 12, 12 is good, but Cardi's they have also one his. He passed, you got him No, no, that's true. They and Cardi's nice. under ASAP. Car- and but Cardi's under ASAP. Dipset. But Playboy Cardi's under Dipset just came. Just came. Yeah. No changes. Like, like, um, it would because like I feel like Cam and Jim is like, like John Lennon and Paul McCartney kind of vibe. But that during, during that time where you had like Dipset, you, you know what I mean, like that too. When you had, you had Dipset, G Unit, and they was giving that everybody. You y'all, y'all fuck with Jim Jones? I love Jim Jones. I love Jim. You know why I love Jim As Jones? As a personality, I, I love him. His I music is no, like but he though. he's. Real talk. This is a hot he take. He has some hot... Yo, people be sleepy. His last he project was dope. Nah. I'm not going to say his last project was dope. Also, also, also keep, let's keep it 100. Mm-hmm. Is Jim Jones one of the only rappers that literally got better as he aged? I think so. Yeah. I think so. He literally got better. I think he every, actually got literally tighter and better. He's gotten more like... He's just gotten more Jim. But Jones. it's tighter. Like, mm-hmm. like his flow is Not better tighter. than Drake. Not better than Drake. <laughs> Wait, well, Drake is not even. Drake has been ten years in the game already. Oh yeah, he, that's a whole other topic. Going, Drake is a whole other topic. That's what I'm but he's an artist that aged extremely well. But I feel like he's still rapping. he's still in it, so I don't look at him as as yeah. But oh, you mean right. an OG? You mean an OG? No, but yeah. you're right. He, he he almost put enough years to kind of be an OG. Like you know what I'm saying? He, he did. He, if you talk about years in hip hop, remember hip-hop? three three to four years is a run. But you then I think about three to four years is a run. You get three to four years, you good. You made it. To He's me, been about since 2007. If we're looking at artists that got better, they got all of them. But wait, what was the first album? 07? Was it 07? Oh, 
08. I feel like it was 09. 08. 09. Oh, it was 09. Thank Me Later was 09. Thank Me Later wasn't his first project. His first project was the one with the. But he counts that as his first album. Y'all was like in junior high in 08. No. I was in college. No, don't, get, don't get that expensive. Don't get that expensive. <laughs> <laughs> he had like a, a like leaves in the background and shit. Vote. Yeah, but that um that was before. So comeback season. You think about comeback season. And before that, he was been, he's been dropping music. Nah, he might so he might have been dropping little mixtapes. Mm-hmm. I probably well, I probably really wasn't up on him. I mean, seven. if we talk about artists like, that feel got better as they got older, I think Ross. Ross, Ross yo, Ross, Ross got better every Ross project got, from he got like yeah, he did. But I mean, I put I put him with Jim. I put them together. You know what I mean? Who else? Um, and Rock has yeah, yeah, he's been around for a minute. Would you say Wayne? Because I feel like Wayne been. Now I wouldn't say he got better as he got older though. But because it's like what Wayne do you count? Do you count ninety? Only because there's a there's one of these. You're right. It was that at one point, and you could have said that a certain year, mm-hmm. and then it was like this. Not a big drop, but like this. Uh, now he's back as him again. But he a plateau. Didn't, he's, he's it's not like, like a plateau. Plateau. Did you hear mm-hmm. Wayne's new album? Mm-hmm. What I mean, that's, I mean, I don't feel like he needed all those features. I think the features were great. Okay. I think the features were great, but like I, I agree with you. I don't think it was like a. He didn't. It's he, not whack. It's not whack, but he, it's just like he came back again. That's exactly. it. Exactly. It's not like he grew. Not whack, but not special. Yeah. That's what I said. It's the same. It's the same kind of. It was it's exactly what I expected from William. All right. Did you hear Eminem Kamikaze? No. How was it? How was it? Not whack, but not special. Pretty much. And I feel like I'm being a victim to today's music. Microwave. I don't even go back to shit anymore. Mm. I do. We on two different levels of that. I don't know. I'm just like microwave, and I'm over the ADD motherfucker. So. My, I'm already going back between so many different types of shit. As someone who listens to like mad people's music, I, I agree. It's hard for me. It's, it's hard, hard to, to go back because it's, it's so much up. stuff to consume. It's I think so the thing about to music today is like I think when we was listening to music, it was like the release dates were separated by at least a few months. This one's separated by like a few days. It's like oh one album, up oh, another album, up oh, another album. It's just like bro, I do you one better. Like back then, everybody unanimous. You know how we all said Dipset in certain generations of music. Yeah, kids today don't even have that experience. Like they get to no. pick and choose their. It's own interesting that y'all love Dipset because so Dipset reign was let's get a year. I would say I'm saying oh three. No, I'm gonna be real with you. It starts from. Technically, it starts from Cam's STD album. Not STD. <laughs> That's SD, not the name. SD. <laughs> SD. Party, you huh? really went far off. SD East. Sex, drugs, yeah. and, sports, drugs, yeah. entertainment. Yeah, sports, drugs, entertainment. I started with that because I feel like Jim was on that. and That was the first time Santana was on there. Yeah. So just He was on uh, What Means the World. Yeah. Like Jim was in the video. So just, let's just start. So we're talking really like 99-ish. But let's just say 2000. But if you want to talk 2000. about... But let's really just... A real, I would say... 2000 to like 05? About. Maybe 06. 06. I feel like that was the run. I, I feel like Hustler's poem was like 2006. I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like. Even longer than that, because. So, how old we are in that realm? I'm just saying how we both picked that. Being that we were like even that's, that's like that's that 10 says to 16. a lot. That's like me for ten to sixteen. So that says a lot that they, they, they had a range. Uh, but I wasn't really that much older. Even I, longer I was, than that because he was still doing songs with Little Wayne's. though, still hundred. Yeah, you know? yeah. You said Joel was doing Smash. So it was at least when did, they, when did they not become your favorite like that anymore? When did you feel like it was what changed for when you? When ASAP came around, as soon as ASAP came around, shit the game. I think they there. were done before Ace. I think, yeah, because I, I think they just weren't fucking with each other like that anymore. Yeah, right, but, who, but what other group were you kind of looking at after them? Nobody from Harlem. No. Nobody, nobody. There was no other group out at the time. I really like, true. Music. In music, there wasn't really no other group. Like, yeah. But ASAP is really like two era, people to me. I feel like <sighs> I have. I don't think I got as, and that's fucked up. From home, I don't think I just got. I got into ASAP. Mm-hmm. I got into Ferg. Another hot take. I think like Ferg is really a fucking superstar. He's oh yeah, superstar, of course. I just, but I feel like way more than like maybe you be all thought when he first came out. I think work was like people didn't. I think people thought work was a flash in the pan. Like yeah. it was just like one hit, but then he started coming with other the songs, and it was just shit. like, oh shit, wait, he can. Really I really do think it. he should be even bigger. Pro Era is even an amazing group, and nobody, they don't even get commercial attention. They're, they're, they're crazy. crazy good. They're crazy great, you know. Mm-hmm. There's so much great music out there, honestly, and like. I'm a Flatbush Zombies fan. I'm, I'm a Flatbush Zombies fan too. I used to work for a, a PR company that was um. That we used to work for Billboard, so yeah. like this music game is like so fucked up. Like people really pay to get their records. Why do you spun. think they haven't? It seems like they still kind of a little bit underground. Like why do you think Flat they haven't zombies or? broke? Like yeah, but why why do you think they haven't kind of? Because they haven't. Con- they refuse to conform. They kind of don't want to conform. Well, was, in what way? Like trying, like trying to make certain. They don't want to probably sell their masters. Yeah, they, they own their ma- They own all that shit, and other companies could probably. Record get labels them. want a piece of that. They want like, you to they have a, piece a look of that can sell. Like you can. You think just they have it? I hate to say it, but it always boils down to this with music. They just haven't had that 
if you know y'all, I'm sure they have a lot of songs y'all love. Then they just haven't had that break yet. That record that that record that just takes you through the room. I just, might not have. It's really all about that one record oh. in this game, wouldn't you say? Cause like you that changes one, everything. Cause I mean, no, you gotta keep it up, but that that changes no, everything. No, because you can have you a hit could still take you across the world. You mm. feel me? There's yeah. like people like Princess Nokia who are not getting played in the radio, but she getting booked all around the world. And yeah. But you know what? A lot of people look people. at like Joey's devastated. They looked at that like it was a sell. It fit with him, but mm-hmm. a lot of people looked at like, oh, he's kind of selling in the radio. Mm-hmm. But for him, that was his first gold song. Okay. So. Maybe for I, like Flatbush Zombies, I love them how they are. Maybe they just haven't found that one song that would be that song where radio would play it. But also, I don't think they look for it. They don't try to force it. Nothing. It's just like if it comes, it comes. If not, Cardi Cardi B, for example, not to be random, but Bodak Yellow was not literally <laughs> changed. No, but literally. I think it was. You said it was not at hit first, at first? No, at first it was just I don't a know. I, don't I think, think that shit put it hits, out to I me. I don't know. It was hard. That wasn't no, my perspective. My perspective, me, that shit was smoking from the jump. When gym. I heard not it, you? it was hard. No, was from hard. when I heard it, it was You bet you didn't like it. No, I loved it. But what I mean is she didn't put that out on iTunes. Enough. It was just on SoundCloud. She just put it up there. She didn't think it was going to be four or five times. Like, I didn't catch it like that. See, I did. I, I caught it like when I heard it, it was going. No, I, I disagree. I think first. I think artists when they make the effort, it's like the game. It's like any game, the art yeah. game, any industry. Mm-hmm. When you have certain connects, she had connects with people in the strip club. Yeah. Look at her connects. It's simple. Just very simple. But you don't think the you song was just that good? That, that particular song, song? I think the song was great, but I listen to so much music, girl. Like I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like it isn't it isn't fucking Nicki Minaj's monster. You know what I'm saying? No. It's you know what I'm saying? It's not certain song, but it's a good but it's, song. No, but it, but I, I, it's not. And I don't hate to compare, but that one song. I'm, it changed shit. And, and, and it's yeah, something it's about true. getting people to connect. When it comes on and everybody's going crazy, mm-hmm. that's the hardest shit in the world to do. Musically. But I think promotion has to do a lot with that. No, it does. When it you, does. When you, when you play does. a song it like does. three to four, like, okay. You're right. You play a song three to four times and everybody's rapping and you're going to know the song. That's a good point. But you know the difference between somebody playing a song three or four times that you know you don't like? Mm-hmm. That wasn't that song. I really thought it was dope when I heard it. Like, the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, she got one. I mean, I heard it. It wasn't like my. It didn't make. It, it didn't, didn't hit me, you. It didn't hit me like certain songs hit me. Like as soon as like Kate Trinata has some songs that as soon as it hit me, I start crying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I see what you're saying. But, but, but well, I like. Yeah, she's Cardi B. Is I mean, I don't think that's ever gonna be the. It's not gonna. No, but it, it, it didn't hit me in the way where I just sort of automatically wanted to play it back and start. Oh my god, I love those. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was dope because like other people were rapping it. So in a social setting, it was a dope song. To exactly. Know. You know. So and that, and that affects you. That makes you like it more. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So it and like and it. An Instagram, but, it, it's, it's it fucking rubs Magnolia off. You're like, was like that for me. But Magnolia Playboy was part. fucking yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just like. Oh, I love that shit. But see, I feel like. It's like when I first heard it, I was just like. Right. But when that shit hit me, I couldn't stop moving. That yeah. shit with my nose. So that wasn't the same. But I do think I like, promotion has everything to do with it. You play a song so many times, you're going to fuck with it. Okay. You're going to fuck with it. All right, we got to get into some quick art talk. We have to get up. Yeah, we got into this. We have to get a certain amount of art talk each podcast. <laughs> but um, you could chime in with what's your thoughts. But um, me and Kadeem were talking earlier about like pricing as far as artists mm. pricing their artwork. Um, so there's two ways about it. Um, Kadeem's gonna share one way and I'm gonna share one point of view. Cause there's one way that could be like a technical point of view as yeah. far as how much your materials cost, per size of the canvas and all that. Uh, he's gonna give you that and yeah. that is valuable. But I'm gonna give you the real life artist shit, the real deal, if you just wanna make money off your fucking art. Mm-hmm. And that's my point of view. No right. right or wrong, I'm just saying it's two perspectives. Cause some people are serious, they, they go by that, what they paid and they stick their price point to that and that's fine. But here's my thing. If it depends on where you are in your art career. If you are a like emerging artist, meaning an artist that is pretty much doing the circuit of doing, you know, art shows, pop-up art shows to get exposure to or uh, you know, posting your art on Instagram. You know, you haven't made it to a certain level with your art yet. Um, I think you need to be realistic about your price point. And here's the thing: in every form of creative expression, and I've done many, I've done music, so I know what this is. In the beginning when you're doing shit, you're gonna not get what you're fully valued for and you have to know that. So take that out the fucking window right now. Mm-hmm. Most motherfuckers that do music, they, they even worse. Most most of the time, mm-hmm. most motherfuckers don't get paid for a performance. What they wanna get is that exposure to get mm-hmm. that fan base, to get that look. That's what it's about. Art is the same way. Me for, I'll, I'll take me for example. Cause I consider myself, I mean, I'm not no superstar or nothing, but I, I, I sell artwork and the reason why I do it is because I'm realistic about who my clientele is. 
I've sold a lot of paintings and most other people that bought my paintings are of a certain age range. There also are certain people that have a certain amount of income it's just because of their age range and because of what they have. So realistically, I can't, even though my shit could be worth it, I think some of my shit is worth a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. Yeah, of course it is. And it will be. But reality is, I'm not a 60 year old artist with 60 year old, 50 year old clientele that's buying my, that are doctors that can fucking pay for that. That's not my reality right now. My reality is the people of the people want my art, like natural people, the culture that are in their twenties and their thirties, and I have to have a price point that is more realistic. Now I don't play myself. I'm not giving shit away for crackhead prices. Excuse the <laughs> excuse the frame, but that's what it is. You know, I'm not giving shit away for fifty dollars and shit like that. But I'm being realistic. I might, you know, some instead of something being two thousand dollars which it might be worth you know i might have to i might have to sell that for eight for somebody that really wants that mm. and i'm not making art to just keep that shit in here i'm making it to get it out i'm gonna make another i'm gonna get that money and i'm gonna make another and, and it's gonna go up and up because when i first started i was selling shit for a hundred dollars my first art show i had a hundred dollar paintings yeah. all right give me that hundred and it goes up but you do go up as you go you go up as you as you as another year of you grinding and you and everything you do is add to your resume and your price goes up. But I'm just saying realistic. A lot of people don't sell art. And I'm telling you because from experience, I know right. a lot of artists. A lot of motherfuckers is not selling art out here. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm just keeping it real. I sell art and I'm telling you why. It's because I'm realistic about my prices. And I know some people aren't. If we go if I go buy art supplies and measurements and all that shit, my shit would cost a lot more than what I sell it for. But realistically, I'm selling my shit to the people, regular people, regular people with jobs just the fucking regular youth of the world right now. And that's who I want to have my heart. And at the end of the day, I'm just one of the motherfuckers that I give shit away. I mm -hmm. might give Santana a piece when she walk out there. So that's another thing. Get your fucking art out there. Mm -hmm. Stop being a diva. It's the people like, people like, they treat it like it's the most treasure to the world. Mm -hmm. Like they are. Sometimes, if you're really trying to get your shit out there, you have to like, know when it's just a time to make a good deal. Mm -hmm. You have to know when it's time to who deserves to just give a piece or just, you know, donate shit to somebody. Donate shit. Just get your shit out there and worry about that. Now, yeah. here's another angle to price point if you right. just want to know the specifics. That's just my take on it. You can do what you want. I'm just saying that's what I do. I know my clientele. And I know the money they have. So I make my art affordable for the people who I know are going to buy my shit. Because I, I, I don't have no... Uh, no big execs or right. I don't have those kind of people coming up on my painting work. Yeah. So far it's just regular people buying my art. Mm. So oh, I'm so sorry. No, go ahead. No, no. No, no, no. no what do you want to say? Right. You're, you're um, the guest. Yeah. So no, I just wanted to say like so then that, that becomes a, a okay, then it becomes a point in your life. Okay, are you uh is this your hobby or is this your career, right? So then if you decide that this is you want to kill, you have to educate yourself to a certain degree. And if you don't get that level of education or business, you have to know like a show whether it's music or show you're selling bakery cheese whatever like you mm -hmm. have to create a demand mm -hmm. regardless of what field or industry mm -hmm. that you're in yep. so it's like it doesn't matter if you want to start a blog or a hat company like all the business works fundamentally the same and what art I definitely agree with you a lot of artists come into the game having a very unrealistic expectation they have 200 followers on Instagram and they're trying to sell the work for a thousand it's not going to happen especially yeah. when the industry is like well you need to have 10k 5k 3k 2k if you want to sell 10 a uh, ten dollar print, like you know, say it's just numbers, you know, and it, any business. A lot of y'all's buying some followers too, but that's another. That's another. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are buying followers, you know, and that's not smart either. You have to learn. You have to. If this is a career for you, you have to learn the logistics of it. Like any other. I, I, I earn my little three thousand or something followers. Fuck that. Yeah, I'd rather earn mine than have a fake. 16, 17, I'm good. You know what I mean? <laughs> but no, nah, you're right. I, I agree. No facts. I mean. But I, I took Rap Billy extremely serious. So I was day in, day out, following people, yeah. following hashtags right. every single day. Like, I wasn't playing. And it's, like, crazy, like, to a certain extent. But you got to be a little bit, you know what I'm saying? You got to be a little bit crazy. Yeah. Depending if you're, how bad you really want it. So I see artists all the time making money off Instagram. You know, there's, this, there's, a one, there's a one beautiful girl. Her name is Art by Brie. And she has, like, this artwork all over her Instagram account, selling prints, selling stickers, selling pins, selling this, selling everything, you know what I'm saying, and promoting herself 24-7. Mm -hmm. And I can tell clearly this is what she does 24-7. Yeah. Some yeah. of these artists, I honestly feel like they're lazy. Like, you well, don't want to get up and do this. I'm, you I'm want to fucking do it. That's a great segue, Ooh. because like yeah. like I also said... That niggas is lazy. Ooh. It's too easy for you to make it out here. Word. You want to be on Instagram taking pictures all day when you can build yourself this following and sell your work. I don't want to hear it. Also, you know it's not saying? a real following. You like, <laughs> like, that's another thing too, is like, you'll see somebody, they have like, yeah. All these followers, but it won't translate. You like, okay, saying? now you're doing something, and where's all those followers? They, yeah. You have, you got fucking. 
10,000 fucking followers or some crazy shit, and you, you do something, I, at least fucking 100 people should show up. 50 people should show up. Yo, thank you. You know what I'm saying? If you have that many people. But, but look, to piggyback, that's why another thing too. Also, uh, artists, if you're really trying to do this, we not in the era. This is not the 1920s. Mm-hmm. It's gonna take more than just selling paintings. That's one of my hustles. Like you have to have. A, it could all be related yes. to art, but you gotta create things. You gotta it's create a business. Thi- you gotta yeah. create, create yeah. different we segments to make you money. Selling paintings is one. Um, doing our event, our fancy color is a part of that my merch. income. Yes. And my, and my, and my, I always tell people like at the end of the day, I have no problem with our shows. But there's, I, I will say with this, and this is on the record. Some people do shit like you said. There's hobby in what you do. Mm-hmm. This is something. This is my job. Yeah. This, this is what the this fuck is, you this do. This is what I do. This is what you yeah. do. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I take this shit. Different. And you know why you don't, you're not playing? And this is why people like have a certain respect for you out in yeah. the streets is because you're consistent. And it's like, when, when this is your Thank livelihood, you. you can see it. Like, you yeah. can see, like, this is, you're not playing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is how you eat. This is your family shit. This is the whole nine. So I told like, Kadeem, even with this podcast, I say, yo, I, I'm not even at the stage of my life. As you get older, I'm not the stage of my life to be playing around with shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> we doing no. it. We fucking doing it. Hey, listen, it, I'm right. not. I'm getting. Listen, I'm getting up there. I'm not. I ain't got time to just do shit for fun. We but gotta do me, it. For me, it's like this. As an artist, who is us? Like, art is all I do. Outside of like these few months I took off from my uncle passing, every day was art post, art post, art post, art post, art post, art post. <laughs> it was like yeah. you can't. You can't do stuff and expect people to buy into something if they're not seeing it. That's mm-hmm. expecting something yeah. ridiculous. Like you said before, like to really be successful in this, you have to be a little crazy. To be successful in anything, you have to be delusional. Yeah. To be successful to rapper, choose a creative you anything, to, yes. you gotta be a little crazy. To and you anything, have to educate you have yourself. To like imagine. that's another thing. Like if you're not gonna get an education, educate yourself. Oh like, yeah. Up there, you know there's many, like, yeah, this is not out, just school, it just learn shit. Learn you know shit, go out and work, get some experience, because it's not gonna be handed to you. Some of these artists think they're so talented, and they are, mm-hmm. but they feel like and I've seen it, I've seen paintings that will blow you away. Mm-hmm. But it's like Bro, it's not the paint. This paint is not gonna be seen by itself. You gotta do man shows. Yeah. You gotta put your out there. You gotta put it out there. You gotta work hard. You gotta be painting all day, every day. Like if this is what you wanna Me do. Me and Rob was you know talking about it before, but he's like, "That's a really dope paint." And I'm like, "I gotta let it run in circuit. It gotta go yeah. in circuits. It's gotta make it stop so other people can see it. Other mm. people can like it and follow it." And I'll do that with a lot of paintings. I still have to do that with paintings that I did from my art gallery. My solo gallery in 2017, where mm-hmm. I still bring them out because mm-hmm. I knew these were standout pieces, and I let them do their circuit. Sometimes to sell something down the road, you gotta let stuff do a little circuit around and let other people see it. I agree. But um, back to what we were saying about pricing. I have two sets of pricing. I have pricing when I do a solo show. And I have pricing when I do a show. Like a like a group show. Like a yeah, pop-up. like a group show. Yeah. So like, say I'm doing a solo show. The way I'm doing it is. Probably how much my paints cost that I did the piece, how much the canvas cost. And then I time myself with all my paint. So I see how many hours I put into a painting. That's so that's way too calculated for, for my brain. Like for my brain, but that's how I just do it. Like I count it up. Like I I'll, I'll see what time I start and I'll see what time I end and I'll just mark it down. Like I just have usually have like a little piece of paper, I'll mark it down. Like okay. I keep a writing book. So I mark it down, I mark it down. So say if I did a painting on like a 30 by 40 canvas, that shit's like $60. Say I do like paintings, and then it's like ten hours on my solo show. I might do that shit like six. Six hundred? Yeah, at my solo show. But out of a pop-up show, you and I'm doing it with another set show. Might bring the price down like two. Is a competition. But you just made a good point. So you just said you said a roughly big piece. You said mm-hmm. how much? Forty. Thirty by forty. Okay, here's our thing. Great tip. I'm glad you reminded me. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. So since we know that you need to make your art affordable if you really want to make sales. If you're a person where your clientele might be people that don't have a lot of money, then how about this? Don't make big fucking art yes. that's going to cost more. Maybe stick to 16 by 20s. You make know, prints of that one big piece. Make prints if you need to. Um, a lot. Of, another thing, too, because this is making me think. A lot of artists think um, that you got to fucking go so big. They just want to be... People, like, just don't mm-hmm. get into the game and grow and just learn and get better. I look at my old shit. When you met me, you, you thought my shit was dope. I look at that old shit, I'm like, I was trash. Yo, your work is amazing. But too many, mm-hmm. I, mean, I appreciate that, but I work at it. It's not like, too, too many motherfuckers think, like you said, it's the Instagram shit. You come in here, don't get gassed by likes. You, you still got to work on the art and but get you're, better. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's another reason why I feel like you're respected in this, you know, art game because... 
Every single, every single time you had your own show, you were showcasing a new piece of your own as well. Well, you that motivated also, me too. You know what I'm saying? You were, you're yeah. also your own artist. See, I didn't really didn't want to be show. known as the person curating. I feel like I'm an artist. That's like, but it's nothing wrong with curating. It's no, just, I feel like, yeah, yeah. I feel like don't put me in that bag because I feel like if you're, it's nothing wrong with it. But if I'm a curator, I'm a curator. Right, right. That's his own thing. It's a, ha- it's a, it's a I, like, I don't, it. like, I, I do it. I, uh, my thing is this. If I got to fucking sweep up the floor, I'll be the janitor too. This is my shit. I'm no, organizing for real. it. No, for so it's like, we went with whatever hat. That's you, what you got to do. You got to, yeah. I'm just putting the event together. It's not about my passion is not hanging in the range of art. Right. That's not my passion. That's you know what I'm saying? It's people that's their passion. They're no, not... it's your passion, no. <laughs> you every, know? Every, every time I went to one of your shows, you definitely had a brand new piece each and every single oh, time. Oh no, that's a fact. You know what that's I'm a, saying? That's a snapple fact. <laughs> that's, that's a snapple and fact. I look and I'm looking at you and, 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 and I'm the kind of person I'm not judging, but if and if you don't, I'm looking at you funny. Yeah. Because it's that kind of like that's how we kind of push each other in a good way though. Yeah, it's we like have, that. We have creative, that creative thing. We've always know? had friendly competition. But just in the sense of just pushing, like, and we could talk we, we spoke about this earlier, because artists need to know this shit. Sometimes artists you can't tell them shit so it's like this let's yeah, say let's say this. like you know you know tommy the animator are you feel with that's his work right there on my wall yes i know tommy all right is. so he's he's like you know yeah at the end of the day, abstract and artist. he's very dope so like not even that i feel like you got to consider the source like you said if i'm respected and you respect my my work ethic and my art and let's say like a kadeem or somebody that you know we cool if i give you a pointer you should respect my point of view and not like mm-hmm. be defensive like i think like, like it's almost, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, for example, like, the thing we tell you right now, he used to do the show, and it was one time I told him, I'm like, I know his art, I know his I know his capability, what he mm-hmm. could do. I was like, yeah, you rushing this shit, you rushing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, you could tell. And you know what? And he never did it again, right? Yeah. He could have fucking got, been mad at and, t- and took it offensively, because exactly. I'm a blunt motherfucker at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm beginning a lot of people's music, and I tell them, like, that shit. Shit is trash, you know what I'm saying? Like I'll promote you. Damn, whatever. you say trash? Damn. Shit is trash. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't tell you it was trash. I said I, I said you rushed. No, but I understand what you mean because somebody needs to hear that. But music is even worse because think about it. Anybody you know, could do it. Anybody like, could do it, and it's harder to get into than the NBA. The stats are there, so it's yeah. like you want are you you want to waste your time when you could be. Is it is it harder to get into than the NBA? Yeah, look at the stats. More people <laughs> could do music. More people. Oh no, could more people could do. Oh, but you said it's harder to get into the NBA than music. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, okay. yes. The mu- it's, it's harder to break into music than the NBA, and more people can do music. So think about the fucking thing. Wait, I'm confused. We saying it's harder to get into music? No, harder to get into the NBA. No, no, it's harder to get into music oh, than really? it is to the... Yeah, so I don't know that. about that. <laughs> you gotta be a certain height to even be in the NBA. Exactly, but exactly. So but think, about the com- think about the competition then. Mm. Think about the competition. I get what yeah, you're saying. I know what you're saying. Everybody can make a song, but not everybody breaking through with that. Not everybody breaking through with that. Not everybody building a fan base. I get what you're saying, but I'm also borderline too high to fully get what she's saying. <laughs> but no, I got you. No, no, no. But for real, like, think I about it. Think about no, it. No, how many, how many people off the top of your head? Ten people who lasted through the game for more than ten years. NBA stars could do that shit if you break into the NBA. Musicians can't. Yeah. yeah. Musicians cannot. That's true. That's now you like to be consistent. Here today, gone tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. How you double know what I'm saying? So like, are usually mostly there. So. People are like everybody wants to do music. Shit, I want to do music. Everybody here has done music. I'm sure. Yeah. Like, you know, music is just one of them things, but it's very hard to do. It's very hard. To, people put their kids in fucking violin at like three. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Just to mm-hmm. just to master this art form. So it's like, you know, I love working in music. I love the industry and all that. But if someone's music is not good mm-hmm. or I don't feel like it's hitting, you can ask somebody else. I'm gonna give. I'm just gonna give you my opinion. I don't think it's good. I listen yeah, to yeah, a lot yeah. of music. But I think I people gotta you? be able to take. Constructive they have to, especially an artist. Mm-hmm. Especially an artist. If you chose, if you chose your career, and this but is what you want. I also to do. feel like a lot of people who are artistic, they don't put together a group of people that's going to give them constructive criticism. Like some people don't want to hear constructive mm-hmm. criticism. Like I have friends who, like, I will send them a piece, and they'll tell me, "Nah, that ain't it." <laughs> like they'll just tell me, like, <laughs> they don't even paint. <laughs> they, 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 just Those are the worst critics. They just exactly. give you real they blunt. Need, they're that, giving you need, blunt, need exactly, world, blunt feedback. Yeah. Yeah, my boy Malcolm. Because a painter might give you g- feedback like, oh, maybe try to do that. I'm working mm-hmm. that. And a real person's like, nah, shit is trash. Because my thing is, like, I got to realize, yeah. like, a lot of people that I might attract as, like, possible buyers don't really know the art world like that. They just go, they really That's see the piece, they're going to buy it. What's the, like, what's the percentage? This is not getting anybody. Just on some real shit, curated shit. You've seen a lot of fucking art in those years of hanging mm-hmm. out. What was the percentage? You're not saying nobody's name. What was the percentage of art that was kind of like maybe trash, do you think? But you still, you still, you still encourage people and shit, but like just as far as in the city. How much trash is in the city? I'll give you my estimation too from doing shows. From the shows that I've personally curated, I'll say like a nice thirty percent. They were they they need a lot of work, but 
You know what I'm saying? I you could get better. Yeah, nah. You, you could get better. It's not like the worst I've seen, but I've definitely had a few artists where I'm just like, I'm not sure if I want to showcase you or not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I give everybody the idea. And this is real. Listen, don't get mad. This is real fucking talk. This is real life. Because somebody like, don't, don't, it, it's just real talk. Like, I didn't say it is like that. Because my thing is this. I'm all for getting better. I look at my old shit and think it's mm-hmm. trash. But I know a lazy fucking artist. Mm-hmm. And if it's just trash because you're lazy. I know artists who just put up pieces just to be in the fucking show and yeah, get drunk. Like, exactly. Like, they're not artists. They exactly. just want to be a part of the world. Exactly. I understand it. You know what I'm saying? But the artist who gives a shit about the work, you're going to see it. Yeah. You're going to see it. It you shows, see, it shows you in the You can work. see if an artist went to school. You mm-hmm. can see if an artist learned this from, you know, just sitting in New York all day. You can see a, an artist's style, which is so important, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you go to different art shows and you're like, I know this person's here right now because I know this person's work. Isn't it beautiful to see... Like artists that you know from when you started to like now, how better they got. Hell yeah, definitely. Like you know, I I'm even happy to like when I go home and you have every single. I'm sure every time you ever show you how you throughout the years you build a, a personal collection. Yeah. Of like you know personal. Yeah, work yeah. Of all the artists, of all the artists either donate, give the work, maybe left it and never came back again to pick it up. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, saying? yeah. Oh shit, we still got. I still got shit from Raw Space days. <laughs> sure. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn. You had your shows That's back like then. That's like a good two or three years now. Yeah. Man. Shit. When I met Santana, right, she met, she came to one of my shows at Raw Space. I was just doing that shit. Just, I was just early starting it. It was like the first, it might have been, it probably, I think it was 2015. It was your first show, really? No, not the first show, but just like the first year. I think it was like the first year I was doing those shows. Um, wow, we okay. started, we started late 2014. It was the first show. It was my solo show, which was called Fantasy and Color. Mm-hmm. That we kept going once the, um, the new year started. And Santana came to one of my shows. And she, um, she made me the first person that made me feel like I was like known. I think I wrote something on Instagram, and she like quoted what I wrote. She was like, "I read somewhere you said uh, you probably don't remember this shit, but wow. like I remember it." But she, um, something I said about being from Harlem, that I paint kings and queens, because that's what I saw in Harlem. Mm-hmm. But she quoted that to me. See, you don't remember that shit, but I remember that. Mm-hmm. Well, that was just, it was just a natural thing for you. But like to me, I was like, "Oh shit!" Like she, you know, as doing when you're doing art, being like recognized for your shit does fucking wonders and it does everything for your motivation to continue I'm, to right, create I'm gonna be honest with you this is the first time we get to chop it up but like when I, I'm from New Jersey like I said small town when I moved to Harlem there was not a lot of um art or music or anything so when I was looking for information your name was always popping up you're definitely making a scene and making it happen because I was doing shows in Queens and Brooklyn so there was nothing in my area at yeah. the time I was living in Harlem that I could go and visit and enjoy my time and like look, look at from meet people from around my area you were providing that, that space and platform and a lot of people don't even know that but like Harlem was at that time was up and coming prices were changing bars were moving in and you were, you were kind of creating the safe space for black and brown yeah. people to come out and showcase the work for a very affordable price so like you know say that in a doc when, I, when I'm dead, <laughs> I got you. I definitely make sure will. they know that. But you know, it's I was because like, they know. I, you know, I don't complain publicly. I'm not that kind of guy. But they know I, I say I don't get my um, Santana. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Cause I could be wrong. Did I coin the phrase art party? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I just don't remember it before. Probably you do art parties. I named my shit art party. That was a part of my whole shit. <laughs> I always knew your shit as fantasy and color. You no, know, it was fantasy and color, but it was the fantasy and but color art party. But I knew it was a party, party, you know what I'm saying? But it was always fantasy and color art party. No, I don't remember, but I definitely remember me being fantasy and color. I, I just, I don't know, I, I'm not 100%, just one of those things. I, I usually say that privately, but we on the podcast, that's what's the good thing about this podcast. I might have coined the phrase art party in this underground scene, I'm not sure. If somebody could show me a flyer predating 2014, 2015, then cool. Yeah, I wasn't even painting before 2014, so you've already. But like, I don't remember a lot of art shit even going on in 2012, 11, 10, 9, 8. Not in Harlem, Brooklyn definitely and all that shit. Not in Harlem, but like you said, I was going. There was um, there was a bunch of. There shit. There might have been some shit. I, I just don't know. Like I'm said, I would love to um, see no, a flyer. That's what I was saying. Like there was nothing going on. Like all the art parties I was heading out to was all in Brooklyn and Queens at the time. Yeah. You were the first art party like, I saw paint, in Harlem. Uh, I've done a couple of shows in Brooklyn before I did. They used to have painting too. poetry. They used to have. I um, did painting poetry. I was a performer. That was one of the artists I've been to here in New York City. Wow, what's up with the poetry? You don't perform poetry no more? Oh. I didn't even know you did poetry. You need to get back in your poetry bag. I did poetry at Payton Poetry when they used to be on um, Bushwick. Um, mm-hmm. He performed one show for us. Yeah, I did. Well, the, the thing with the poetry for me is that I just, most people don't realize it. It'll probably come out when I do my next show. Every piece is with a poem. Oh, are you going to have a poem so, that goes with each yeah, piece? Yeah, so every piece has a poem that goes with it because I construct it and get it out of my head like that. That's usually how it is. 
I've always wanted to work on a book of poetry, so I guess I'm kind of like Lil' Kia's, but it's just never. If you, like, I like to compare shit to shit, like, because, you know, Kadeem does, like, emo. <laughs> so, not a bad, nah, that's a shit. Emo, so, what you call it? Emo surrealism. surrealism. Emotional surrealism. I feel like if he, I feel like if he was a, if you had to say, like, take an artist and they style and they vibe, who would they be if they was a rapper? You would be, like, a Cuddy, maybe, or... Somebody like that, right? I've gotten a Cuddy. A couple. He'd be like an Art Cuddy. I'd just feel like, like an Art Cuddy or Art Wale or Art... You know what I'm saying? Wale's a different one. I feel like I put emotion into my art, but y'all don't get it. And y'all don't really see it. I feel like you give me big, big pun vibes. You know what I'm saying? Lots of color, lots I'm of black I'm the big women. pun of art. Yeah, you like the big pun I of art. Say, I would say that. Hell yeah. That's definitely what But I think, I think with my art, I think people are, um, are just like mesmerized by the colors. I don't think they... um. I don't think they get into like the content. I mean, it depends if they know you. They're gonna. But I don't. I don't. But I don't think it's always something to get because I don't think I get it. But I just think is to me. I think is is dark hidden with. Is I think it's dark really hidden in vibrant. Well, vibrant colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could agree. And I think that's me. I think I'm dark, but I think I have a a, a, a vibrancy that shines, but really inside is dark. Not like I'm gonna go kill anybody or anything. But this is my all god knife. That's a bad segue. Oh uh, yeah. Dope? Yes. Yeah, Christy got that for me. <laughs> Actually, Chris, shout out to Christy because oh, she yeah. was one of my first artists I've ever showcased. You knew Christy before me. And yes, I did. Yeah. She was one of my very first artists I've oh, ever wow. showcased in my entire yeah, life. I never knew that. Yeah. yeah. She came Fun out. Fact. Fun, Fun fact. Fun fact. I don't know. When I was becoming a curious, she was becoming an artist and we were like, we, were, you know what I'm saying? And how, how about Christy's development art wise? Yo, Christy has came up in the art look game. At, look at that shit. Just come. Well, just, Christy. Not even, not even oh, just. Shit. I remember when you were doing the hearts and all that. Yeah, yeah. I am out of that. Wow. Congratulations, Thank girl. You. You've definitely moved up in the art. Yeah, yeah. In the art world and shit. <laughs> See in the beginning, like I, I did every, I did a lot with fantasy and color, like as far as the legwork. But pretty much, pe- uh, for people who don't know, Christy does most of the fucking operating of that shit now. I bet I'm you, just we, the face. Women, I'm we, just the face now. Because women are the shit. That's why. That's why we, we, we do everything up in this bitch. Yeah. If y'all niggas did ever look, did send an email, it wasn't me. Rob, I want to get real. Rob, I want to get real. as fuck on this mic right now. Nah, go ahead. What the fuck is up? And this is one of the reasons why I couldn't do this game no more. What is up with all these damn curators, promoters, and everybody cutting fucking each other's throats when it comes to these events, when it comes to these shows? I don't know. I might have to start a new app.